We are now able to find Alzheimer's, the beginning of Alzheimer's and Parkinson's decades in advance. Alzheimer's is actually no longer difficult to detect 10, 20, 30 years in advance. And so when you know these things, you don't have to be nervous about it, you don't have to be worried about it because you can actually reverse these issues. Welcome back, everybody. Appreciate you being here. As always, I love going through a new Cabral concept each and every day with you because the goal, in my opinion, is getting better literally every single day. Not by a lot, but just by 1% or so every day. And that is how we add up to the actionable gains that we want in our life, that we can actually realize our true potential of living a life of more energy, more vitality, and just more abundance in every area. And a lot of that starts with just energy. And it starts with not energy just in the body, but also in the brain. And one of the things that I hear over and over in my practice working with clients is that they're worried. People are getting worried right now that once they reach their 50s, 60s, 70s, 70 plus, they're not going to have their memory, that they're, they're worried about Alzheimer's and dementia and Parkinson's and lots of other maybe brain and nerve related issues. So one of the things that I like to share with them is I is always say, we are now able to find Alzheimer's, the beginning of Alzheimer's and Parkinson's decades in advance. Alzheimer's is actually no longer difficult to detect 10, 20, 30 years in advance. I've shared with you blood work that you can run, I've shared with you brain scans that you can done. I know it sounds scary, but it's actually super simple. I just did it about six months ago. And it will show you if there is the beginning of deterioration of the brain. And so when you know these things, you don't have to be nervous about it. You don't have to be worried about it because you can actually reverse these issues. I teach this in depth in high performance health, but also I talk about it on my podcast all the time, like literally all the tips. And today is going to be no different. I'm not going to hold back in any way, shape or form. What I want to share with you is something called brain derived neurotropic factor. And I've talked about it on previous podcasts. I'm going to link those up for you today because I like to build off of other shows as well. So it's not that you can't start here, right? But I like to be able to build off of it. So if you go to stephencabral.com slash 2762, today's show is the seven factors that age your brain, all right? And then next week, I'm going to do another follow-up, which is literally the foods and supplements that you can use to improve BDNF, which is the brain-derived neurotropic factor that is going to enable you to keep that brain healthy and strong for your entire life. All right, so let's get started. Uh, BDNF, if you think it's related to the brain, yes, it is related to the brain. But believe it or not, and this is what a lot of people don't know, it's actually, it's, it's seen, it can be found in the pancreas, in the eyes, namely the retinas, the kidneys, the prostate, uterus, uh, your muscles in your body, your GI tract, your lungs, your heart, and even your salivary glands. So it is present all over the body. Um, it got its name brain-derived neurotropic factor mainly because what we want to see it used for is to create and maintain healthy neurons, basically nerve cells and synapses in the brain. Now, what that means is that when you are thinking thoughts, right, or you are receiving signals from the body. So for example, I'll pick up this nice little mug here. This has the word gratitude on it, gratitude mindset, right? So when I touch this, I'm getting actually signals from the temperature of the mug to the density of the mug. All of those things are traveling through my nervous system, right? From the proprioceptors in my fingers to essentially my spinal column. Uh, the nerves are then innervating up the spine to the brain. The brain then gets the signal. It also tells my hand what to do. Too hot, too cold, do I need to release this cup? How tightly should I grip it, etc. Well, the same thing happens with recalling memories, right? Or thinking or solving problems, etc. What we need to do is have those let's just call it the electricity of the thoughts, move from neuron to neuron to neuron all the way through the parts of the brain that they need to get to, like the uh, frontal cortex or other parts of the brain or um, the cerebellum, right, for balance, motor control, then back down to the body. So all that to say is that with aging, they can actually be damaged due to oxidative stress. The same oxidative stress that could cause 
uh, amyloid, uh, beta amyloid based plaques in the brain that can lead to Alzheimer's uh, and much more. So it is BDNF that is protective. It actually has something that was called neuroplasticity or brain plasticity that can actually repair damaged cells, even after brain trauma, such as a um, TBI, traumatic brain injury, or a concussion, something like that. So again, I'm going to share with you the, the factors that are not, that we don't want, that actually decrease BDNF. And then next week, what I'm going to share with you are, I think, pretty straightforward ones in food and nutritional supplements that can build up BDNF. All right. So let's go over it right now. That was your precursor. If it was review for you, I apologize. But uh, if not, hopefully it helped as at least as a refresher for, for many people. All right. Let's dive right into it. And the first factor, the first factor. Now, again, you're probably going to say, well, you know, the, what can I do about this is age. But just like I'm describing tomorrow on the Cabral concept um, is, or actually I believe that is going to be on Thursday's show because I want you to tune into that. Yes, this episode uh, it will be coming out Thursday, 2764, basically longevity diet. So I'll be talking about some of those. But the thing is, I, I know that age is the first reason for lowering BDNF, but we can see um, people in their 60s and 70s still with strong BDNF, and that is because they have a lower biological age. So remember, the number of years that you've lived on this planet, right, is not the same as your biological age. Chronological, number of years you've celebrated birthdays. Biological is how internally your body is functioning youthful wise, right? So if everything's good, and I'll be giving those tips next week, if everything's good uh, inside the body, you could be a decade younger. You really can. So although just like hormones, they begin to decline with age, typically after the age of around 50, it does not necessarily mean BDNF, just like hormones, fall off of a cliff. And we'll say more so for like, let's talk about men's with testosterone. I understand women during menopause, they're going to um, have a decline of estrogen and progesterone. But uh, we're talking about, let's talk about hormones as they decline as testosterone, DHEA, et cetera. All right. So age, we can't fully do something about, but we can kind of get the others a lot more in check. The second one is actually dealing with chronic-based health conditions. So a lot of people have inflammatory, autoimmune, or other health-based conditions. So autoimmune conditions might be a psoriasis, rheumatoid arthritis, might be lupus, MS, uh, rheumatoid arthritis, Hashimoto's, et cetera. There's a lot of autoimmune issues, of course. So that's an issue. But really, it can be anybody with chronic inflammation. It could be chronic pain. It could be chronic inflammatory skin issues besides psoriasis, right? Uh, it could be chronic headaches that you may be dealing with. Some chronic inflammatory issues, maybe it's gut issues. We want to be able to resolve those because chronic inflammation can decrease BDNF. All right. The third one is a sedentary lifestyle. I was reading recent research. This is pretty wild. The research actually sh shared, especially with people with type 2 diabetes, that they could have a decrease in BDNF because BDNF is always being decreased or uh, increased, decreased, et cetera, um, all the time in the body. And literally 15 minutes... Of, of sitting starts to decrease BDNF, which is pretty wild, right? Because we all sit down for more than 15 minutes a day. But all the study meant to show was that the more you are seated during the day, the less BDNF you're producing. And there seems to absolutely be a link with insulin resistance, we'll call it type 2 diabetes, cardiovascular issues, high blood pressure, right? All of those are the three main causes of um of mortality, and you can add cancer to that as well. But it's the inflammation that absolutely does affect BDNF. It's like the repair process isn't working there, and the BDNF that's in the pancreas um, and the beta cells of the pancreas that are producing the insulin, they may not actually be working as well. And we kind of know that, right, due to the insulin resistance. So there's there's a there's a definite tie between that insulin resistance and the BDNF. So if you have blood sugar dysregularity fix the blood sugar dysregularity, get to the root cause, you'll start to then produce more of your own natural BDNF, and then you'll also have less of a chance for Alzheimer's since Alzheimer's is often considered type 3 diabetes. All right, tobacco smoking. So smoke inhaled in general, from vaping, from anything, breathing in smoke is a known carcinogen that is damaging for the lungs and the rest of the body as a free radical. So I don't really need to say more about that 
try not to inhale secondhand smoke, firsthand smoke, try not to inhale any smoke at all. All right, the, the fourth one, or fifth one actually, which I, I found interesting is that people living in cities or high air pollution areas, the toxicity from the pollutants themselves create more, it always goes back to oxidative stress, right? High blood sugar levels, oxidative stress. Smoke, oxidative stress. Inflammation, oxidative stress. Uh, we age more, there's more oxidative stress. We can't balance that. We don't have enough of what's called um, redox potential. And again, I talk about this, in, if this interests you, I talk about this in depth at highperformancehealth.org. You're welcome to check it out as well. So air pollution though, uh, it absolutely has been shown to decrease BDNF. All right, high stress lifestyle. I even did a podcast looking at DNA methylation and biological age based on job. We can link that up for you today. That was kind of a fun show. I mean, like the worst, <laughs> worst positions for that. But you can check out that. I'll link it up today at uh, stephencabral.com slash 2762. That's today's show notes. Three big takeaways plus the show notes there. Um, but high stress job or, um, I, again, my research has showed that divorce when you were a child, so as a child growing up in a divorce household uh, or childhood trauma, if it's not resolved, can decrease mortality, so all, like basically lifespan, and decrease BDNF. Now, I'm sharing this with you, not because there's no hope if you know you were a child and your parents got divorced, not at all, or there was childhood trauma. Uh, many people, many people you know, go through this. But what happens is it's unresolved. It's unresolved childhood trauma or everyday life stress that can decrease BDNF. So absolutely do work with a therapist, a qualified counselor that can help you with some of that as needed. And the last one, of course, is the standard American diet. There might not be anything worse in this world. Stress is a pretty bad one, but there might not be anything worse in this world than a high fat and high sugar diet, right? So a lot of people try to promote a high fat diet. A lot of people try to promote maybe a high carb diet. Um, they are, I would say, neither one is probably the best. Like based on the longest living people in the world, they, they had what's called a relatively high carb diet compared to like I, what a low carb diet might look like. But it was like 60%, 50, 60% of their diet was carbs. Let's say 60. Um, they had about 30% uh, or so from fat and about 10% or so from protein. Again, I'm just sharing with you, if you look at average blue zones, it was somewhere between 50, 60% carbs, um, somewhere around 30% or so fat, which was the majority of them, and then 10 to 20% or so uh, protein. It, and it was more like 10 to 15% maximum protein. Anyway, um, I'm not, we're not going to debate about that here today. You're welcome to. That's okay. Uh, and, and we always appreciate all your comments. But the problem is, it's a high-fat diet and high-sugar diet. And in the U.S., it's especially in the West, it's hydrogenated fats, which are the worst fats. We're not talking about olive oil, right? We're talking about like hydrogenated vegetable oils. And then high sugar, we're talking about processed foods. So we're not talking about like berries or uh, purple sweet potatoes, right? Or, or, you know, your cruciferous vegetables. We're talking about muffins and candy and pastries and, you know, packaged chips and those types of things. So a high fat, high sugar diet, which really is what the Western based population lives on, uh, it decreased BDNF in the hippocampus. And the hippocampus is literally one of the main epicenters for learning and memory. And so there was a direct tie between those two. Those are the seven main factors for aging the brain. So if you're currently living on a high fat, high sugar diet, a lot of stress in your life or past stress, uh, air pollution, you're living in a polluted base city, um, you might not be able to do anything about that, right? But if you only have one out of the seven, okay, not so bad. And you have air filters in your home, your office, et cetera. Uh, tobacco smoke or smoke in general, we have to stop that. Sedentary lifestyle, do you get your 10,000 steps per day, right? Or are you seated for the majority of the day? Um, chronic health conditions, let's get to the root cause, fix those, and then we can't do anything about age, but we can reverse our biological age. We can absolutely do that, so continue to work on that as well. Hopefully today's show was helpful. Again, all the show note links will be at stephencabral.com slash 2762. Do share the show with anyone you feel like a serve. Take care, everybody. Have an amazing rest of the day. Thanks so much for tuning into today's show. Before you go, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. I want to make sure that you're getting our daily content, not missing out on anything. Functional medicine, 
wellness, weight gain, weight loss, anti-aging, living longer, stronger, and all of the most cutting edge research. And if there's any topics you want to hear, feel free to leave them in the comments below. Take care.